Okay, so this is a knife review that I've been holding off for some time, mainly because I wanted to use this knife for longer than a typical knife review. Uh, I, I kind of have to put this out there. When I review a new knife, whether it be a German knife or a Japanese knife, I'm always asking myself, can this knife replace my favorite knife? I feel like when that's your goal and you're trying to replace something that you're currently using, that would be a good review or that would be a good user experience. Uh, this knife here has been in my kitchen for two months. And it's the Messermeister Oliva Elite. And if you guys have seen my previous videos in the past, you know that I've reviewed and used every Wusthof and every Zwilling that's on the market today. And so I didn't really have a huge desire to go out and buy a German knife or another German knife to add to that review collection. But the main thing that really drew me to the Messermeister higher end knives was the fact that the Four Seasons Chef Knife was my top pick in 2019 as the best knife for under $40. So a couple of months ago, I finally made room in my kitchen knife collection to put this knife into it, and I'm glad I did. And it actually replaced the, it was the Zwilling Pro was what this knife replaced. And the Zwilling Pro has been in my kitchen since, I wanna say June or July of 2018, when we moved to this new home in the Sacramento area. Um, I really just left that Zwilling knife in my kitchen as the, you know, kind of the mule <laughs> in my kitchen. Guests use it, my wife uses it. So anyone who I think doesn't know how to treat a Japanese knife properly, gets it the Zwilling. Now the German steel that they're using is the X50 CRMO V15. First thing out of the box sharpness was very impressive. And if we're talking just right out of the box sharpness, I would say it's just as sharp as some of the higher end Japanese knives that I've had. And you guys are probably wondering, edge retention is very good. Uh, like I said, it's been in my kitchen for two months and I haven't felt the need to actually sharpen it yet. But I do need to make a disclaimer, I do have a Japanese knife in the knife drawer sitting next to this one. And so my guests and myself can grab either one. This knife here is not the sole chef knife in the knife drawer, so it's not being used as some of my other test subjects in the past where I have one chef knife, one pair knife. Right now I've got a German knife, which is this one here, and a Japanese knife, which is Ryusen. So this knife is not getting used as much as it could be when I was using and testing my Zwillings and my Wusthofs. So just to make that clear. Fit and finish for this knife, I would say is probably the best polished knife of all the German knives I've used uh, coming from Zwilling and Wusthof. Now Wusthof is particularly guilty of this. If you pick up any Wusthof, I don't care which one it is, whether it's the Icon, the Classic, any of their knives, you pick up their knives and you run your finger along the bolster, the spine, and the choil or the neck of the knife, I guarantee you, you will feel like it can almost cut you. Not so on this Messermeister. This is by far the best polishing I've had on a German knife. Now make no mistake, the spine and the balser and the choil does have an angular finish to them. It's very German. That is not to say that Wusthof does not polish the spine and the balsers of the knives. I'm just saying that Messermeister does a much better job polishing their knives than Wusthof does. Now coming down to the handle, this is what really sold me on this knife. Seeing the olive wood handle was something else. This is like the German version of the Miyabi's birch wood. It is a very handsome knife. And this handle was surprising to me because it is raw. Being a very heavy Japanese knife user, I am used to having knives with raw handles. A lot of the handles that I get on Japanese knives, they do require some sort of mineral oil on them so that you can protect the wood from absorbing too much water or stains in long-term use. This knife here has been used in my kitchen, like I said, daily for two months, and the handle doesn't look quite brand new. It's lightened up a little bit. You can tell that there is some wear on the handle, but in terms of stains, we're not seeing any sort of stain penetration on the handle. And the fact that I've not seasoned this knife's handle in two months of use, and it looks this good, is telling of how good olive wood as a handle material really is. If you look at this knife straight from the back, you'll notice that the left and the right side are actually asymmetrical. That's usually a telltale sign that a handle was hand shapened. And holding this knife, it is very comfortable in the hand. There are no sharp edges anywhere. The overall girth and circumference of this handle is very well proportioned. I don't feel like it's too large for my hands. And so people with medium to even large hands, I think will be very comfortable holding this knife. Not having a thick stainless steel end cap makes the handle a little bit lighter and it just gives a knife a bit more of a, I don't know, it's a more rustic look than having a more modernized, you know, black handle knife with a stainless steel end cap. You guys have always heard me complain when I'm using my Zwillings or my Wusthofs, 
uh, or some of the lower end German knives out there, they have this massive finger guard or extension of the bolster that makes it just virtually impossible to have a sharp heel on your knife. Coming from a hand sharpener, I appreciate the fact that there is no finger guard on this knife. There is one other thing on this knife that until you actually use it, you will not appreciate it. This knife's spine thickness is only 2.5 or 2.57 to be exact. Most of the German knives I've used will have a thickness on the spine between 2.7 to 3.3 and even up to 3.5 in some of the extremes. Because the spine thickness is only 2.5 millimeter, I do feel like it's a bit more lighter on the cutting board and a bit more responsive and just a bit more pleasurable to use than your average Wusthof and Zwilling. Now the extra 0.5 millimeter of thickness in the spine does help split certain ingredients ingredients such as a large watermelon or spaghetti squash, something that's very hard. The extra 0.5 millimeter of spine thickness may help there. I honestly never felt that this knife lacked any sort of cutting power. Now you think I'm praising this knife too much. Are there things I can change about this knife? I would say there's one thing about this knife that I would probably consider changing on the 8 inch model. This is the 8 inch model. Uh, on the 9 inch model, it may be a bit less of a issue for me. Um, the belly on this knife is very short. And so what that means is the belly on this knife is a bit further closer to the tip than what I would like it. If the belly was moved back about a half an inch or so or a quarter of an inch, the tip would be a bit longer and a bit more narrow. Uh, but the positive side of moving your belly closer to the tip is that when you're rocking on the cutting board, uh, cutting ingredients like onions, cilantro, if you are more prone or have a tendency to raise your heel a bit higher than let's say 20 to 30 degrees, you're less likely to damage the tip of your knife. So even though I am more of a flatter profile user, the rounded belly does offer some conveniences and protection for many people who like to rock their knives. And you know when you hear people say things like, oh, you speak English really well for an Asian, or I'll get something like, your voice is very deep for an Asian. I mean, it's like a compliment, but then they take it away. <laughs> so I don't want to make it seem like I'm complimenting this knife and then taking it away. And again, there is a pretty big distinction between Japanese and German knives. So I need to make that clear. This is a German knife. But I have to say the polishing of the spine, the bolster, the finishing of the handle, the overall finish of the knife really makes for a compelling package. To sum it up, I want to say that this is almost a near perfect knife. So we've got knife burritos. <laughs> Knife burritos. Okay, here we go. So in this burrito, we have a Santoku and a paring knife. And in this burrito, we've got a beautiful cheese knife, a bread knife. So I've got about 50 sets of knives from my most recent shipment from my friends over at Kangshan. Technically, I can't call it a giveaway, but they're all for sale for a dollar plus the cost of shipping. So I'll post a link in the video description to where you guys can get these knives. All right, well, thank you guys for being here and I'll catch you in the next video.